Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. Send us an email at customerservice at lanessafarms.com or give us a call or text at the number listed below. Today we're continuing our Livestock Health Series talking about zoonotic diseases. You can help us to improve our ratings by leaving comments below. Also, please consider sharing our videos with friends or family members that you feel may be interested in the topics that we discuss. As always, we appreciate your feedback. All of our videos are made specifically for you. Please consider subscribing, and we really appreciate those thumbs up. Without further delay, let's get started talking about zoonotic diseases. So as you know, if you've watched any of our other videos, most of our videos are in direct response to individuals, questions, or comments. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. This is something that I was thinking of uh, today as I'm sitting home sick uh, with a low-grade temperature and body aches um, that I probably picked up at work. Um, as a healthcare provider, every time I'm going in and out of a patient's room or visiting with a patient, I'm always cautious to use what we refer to as universal precautions. Um, I'm always sanitizing my hands, I utilize gloves, I'm cautious of whom and what I come in contact with, uh, but for some reason, when it comes to livestock, I see lots and lots of people that just, for no good reason, don't use any precautions whatsoever. Um, I have been on farms where we are docking tails and castrating hundreds of lambs at a time and these guys will go right to eating a sandwich um, without even thinking about washing their hands and for the love of me I just can't figure it out. With that being said, at the time that this video is being recorded it's early January um, and lambing and kidding season is hitting us pretty hard here on Lanosa Farms. And this is the time of year that if I'm going to come in contact with something, it's probably going to be now. And the reason is, is because uh, the adult animals are stressed because of the cold and because they're pregnant. Um, the babies are having things done like castration and vaccination and tail docking. Um, I may be helping deliver babies, so I can possibly come in contact with blood and bodily fluid. So these are all things that need to be considered. There are many diseases um, that you and others can possibly come in contact with from sheep and goats. Um, we refer to these as zoonotic diseases. Um, so zoonotic diseases are contagious diseases that are spread between animals and humans. Uh, it's estimated that approximately 75% of the recent emerging infectious diseases in the world are coming from animals. And with that being said, approximately 60% of all human pathogens are zoonotic as well, which means that not only can we get things from animals, but we can give things to animals as well. A prime example, flu outbreak uh, of 1918, um, geese are carrying uh, the flu, uh, they give it to hogs, hogs give it to people, people give it to poultry, and things get out of control. This is uh, nothing new. Um, but, you know, sheep and goats, we have same issues that we can run in uh, to with them. So you can get these diseases through direct contact with infected animals, and you can also get them in other ways, uh, like contaminated food, contaminated water, um, inhalation. Say the animal, say there's feces on the ground and you stirred up all your cleaning and you inhale the dust. Or say you drink goat milk um, that hasn't been properly pasteurized. And there's also what we call anthropod vector. So an anthropod vector is a third party involved, such as a fly or a tick or a mosquito, and they can bite the infected animal and then bite you and then you can become infected that way. So today we're gonna to go through kind of a condensed list of the most likely uh, sheep and goat diseases that can be transmitted to humans. Um, 
we're going to kind of group them together and we're going to talk about common routes of infection. Uh, many of these diseases, uh, whether in animals or humans, are actually reportable to state and federal authorities. So if any of this should come up, we want you to contact your veterinarian or your state and local health department for information about state disease reporting requirements. Um, with all of this being said, I provide health care to people. Um, I do not provide health care to animals other than my own. So while I would not appreciate a veterinarian coming to my work and telling me how to take care of my patients, I'm sure veterinarians don't appreciate me telling you how to take care of your animals. With that being said, if you have questions, if you have problems, the best source for you to go to to get the right answers is your local veterinarian. And we are huge fans of you establishing a good relationship with your local vet before something bad happens. Even I, who may appear to know everything there is to know about taking care of animals, has the veterinarian that specializes in sheep and goats out here on my farm at least once or twice a year for things that are outside of my ability, outside of my scope. So don't ever think that you can find all the answers that you need on the internet. While articles like this one and videos like this one may be able to steer you in the right direction, we are not a replacement for a good old veterinarian. So last but not least here, let's get started talking about the diseases, the zoonotic diseases. We're going to start off with rabies. So rabies is a severe viral disease that can affect all mammals. Uh, this obviously includes sheep and goats. So people most often get rabies through an animal bite, this direct contact that comes to them through an infected animal. Uh, but it can also be exposed uh, to people through saliva, brain, or spinal fluid um, from an infected animal. Say maybe you have a cut or a break on your skin or a mucous membrane. That's an easy way for you to get the disease from an infected animal. Chances of a sheep or goat actually having rabies is pretty slim, um, but if they were to be attacked by an affected canine um, or a fox, coyote something like that a dog uh, that would be a way that they would come into contact with it so early human symptoms include fever headache confusion abnormal behavior uh, a lot of like underlying neurological signs and and believe it or not a lot of people don't know this rabies is one of the most deadly um, viral diseases out there how deadly let's just say in the history of rabies uh, when humans have had the symptoms start to manifest themselves, there's only been about a handful that have actually survived. Okay, contagious ecthyma. Um, you might have heard of this one before, although probably not by this name. This is sore mouth. So sore mouth is caused by the ORF virus. It's contagious in people. Um, and contagious in animals, extremely contagious in animals, and this is actually one of the more common um, viral infections that you'll see in sheep and goats. Uh, people become infected by direct contact with skin lesions or scabs, uh, usually on the face and mouth of infected animals. You can sometimes see it around the teats on uh, lactating am animals as well. Um, in people, this usually only causes one singular lesion, although they can be pretty nasty. Um, local sore wounds develop. A lot of times you'll see it develop on people's hands. Dermatophytosis. Probably haven't heard of that one before, but I can guarantee you've heard of its common name, which is ringworm. Ringworm is not a worm at all. It's a common fungal disease caused by little critters we refer to as dermatophytes. Uh, dermato meaning skin. Uh, people can become infected by direct contact with the spores on an infected animal. Now these spores may be on the animal's hair, wool, or skin, and can even be on things we refer to as fomites. So a fomite, this is another general term, for an inanimate object that can carry uh, a, a disease, a virus, a fungus, something like that. Um, so an example would be brushes or clippers. 
Dermatophytosis tends to be more common in show lambs than in production flocks. And the reason for this is, is when we shear the animal down, we remove its protective barrier um, and the lanolin that naturally protects it from getting ringworm. That's why you see ringworm come up a lot in the show circuit. Itchiness is the most common symptom and the spots are generally inflamed at the edges with redness scaling and occasional blistering. Chlamydiosis, yeah, uh, about as bad as it sounds. Chlamydiosis is a bacterial disease in sheep and goats caused by the Chlamydiophila abortus uh, bacteria. Pregnant animals can shed this in large numbers um, in the placenta and uterine discharges when they abort or give birth. Now, although rare, people can become infected by direct contact with birthing tissues. Um, there are additional ways to be infected as well. I'll leave that open to your imagination. Um, in people, animal-associated chlamydiosis um, causes flu-like signs, so you're going to get fever, body aches, headaches, redden eyes, and pneumonia. Now, pregnant women uh, should avoid contact with all pregnant or aborting animals um, just for this case and that's because this can actually cause abortions um, in women as well. Campylobacteriosis, a major cause of enteritis in humans. Um, you may have heard this under different names such as uh, C. coli or C. jejuni, uh, Campylobacter, uh, Spiracoccus, um, often infects people by the consumption or contamination of undercooked meat and unpasteurized milk or dairy products. Uh, people can also become infected by untreated water or contact with infected animals or feces. People infected with this have horrendous diarrhea, fever, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, headache, muscle pain. Imagine the worst flu you've ever had in your life plus horrible diarrhea. Um, if you are immunocompromised, um, this can be deadly. Cryptosporidiosis. You know this one as coccidiosis. Um, cryptosporidiosis results from infection by the Cryptosporidium parvum, a coccidian parasite common in the environment and carried by many animals without symptoms. That's right, lots and lots of them carry it and lots and lots of them don't show it. This is one of those that you're gonna notice when you have little lambs and little goats and let me tell you, once you experience this once, you will never forget it because the smell is... Uh, the smell of this, you will know it, and it invokes almost instant nausea is the best way that I can put it. Um, people often become infected by ingestion following contact with objects contaminated with feces or unwashed hands after contact with ill animals. Infections in people can cause stomach cramps, watery diarrhea, nausea, and poor appetite. Vomiting, fever, muscle aches uh, also may occur, so almost like flu-like symptoms. So while we haven't touched on all of the zoonotic diseases that you can get from sheep and goats, um, we have certainly left out some really deadly ones. We have left out listeriosis, uh, salmonella, Q fever, lots of other ones out there. But the point of this video is to help you and to remind you um, Practice good hand hygiene, practice universal precautions, wear your gloves, pay attention to your animals, and especially pay attention to your little ones um, when you go to visit farms or if you have uh, sheep or goats of your own. You know, kids love to handle these animals and you put them at increased risk by not practicing very simple preventative measures like good hand hygiene. Well, as always, we hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Lanessa underscore farms. Remember, these videos are made specifically for you, and we need your feedback and your comments to help us develop new, fresh videos for you to watch. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.